Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by the head coach for the Presentation Saints, Coach Stan Holt, coach in your first season with the Saint with the Saints. And it's uh it's been a good year so far, about middle of the road, eight and ten currently, uh, coming off a loss on Saturday. And and with the North Star conference schedule, you get the Friday, Saturday matchups going on. A tough loss against Dakota State on the road, 62-57. Uh, in it pretty much all the way through rally, you take a lead in the second half and then just come up a little bit short. Can you tell us where you are right now? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a tough, tough one. And, uh, I thought we competed, especially in the second half responded and, uh, just, just fell a little short. We're missing a few players and, uh, I don't ever give our team an excuse to lose. Uh, we did everything we could with who we had and I thought we were really close, um, had a couple of things uh, go the wrong way, especially in the last few minutes and ended up coming up short in that Dakota State game. Well, Coach, and I, I know uh, you know you have to make those those adjustments. Many coaches throughout the country uh, making lineup adjustments right now, and it has been that way over the last couple of years. And so uh, I appreciate that. No excuses. You just get out there and play. One of your players, though, that uh, performed well for you, Denzel McDuffie, uh, led the way. He had 23 points, 10 boards in this outing, and I'm sure it's nice to get good production from a senior. Yeah, he's been he's been very productive, especially in conference play and. Uh, He's a highly competitive player, um, and uh, we, we signed him, um, you know, not too long after I got the job, and he was, I thought, uh, somebody that would have a chance to maybe be a player of the year candidate in the conference, and so he's uh, been showing that to this point, and so uh, we, uh, we need to pick it up, uh, you know, as a team, but individually, uh, he's been really great, especially statistically, he's been just uh, filling up the stat sheet. Well, Coach, I would think so. I, th I think you have to be mentioning him along the way. Three-time player of the week in the North Star Conference already, so he he has to be in the running for that. And and you mentioned you know increasing the numbers with conference play with with McDuffie's in particular. Overall, he's sixteen points a game, seven point eight boards per game in North Star play, twenty two point three points per game, ten point three rebounds, averaging a double double. And he's not the only one. You have a couple more seniors that their numbers have gone up in conference play as well with. The Ian Kelly and Travez Nix. Yeah, the the those guys. Um, Travez is is actually I don't know if he's how he's listed on the website, but he'll have one more year left. But but Ian and, and Denzel, this is their last go round, and um, they're trying to come together and try to find a way for us to get conference wins. And uh, they've been stepping up their play, and hopefully that will continue. And and will um, you know I think with with Denzel you know, winning conference player of the week. I, I should mention that uh, two out of three of those times uh, we've won during those weeks and, and recently we have not. And I think his production is there, but you know, <clears throat> it's tough to win those awards if you're not winning. And so right now we're on a little bit of a slide. And I think if we get back into that winning column, I think he'll continue to see those accolades. We're speaking now with Coach Stan Holt here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate that. We're, our subs are growing, and, and we're thankful for you watching us here. Uh, Coach, you know you, you mentioned that, and I think that's something to be talked about. Eight and ten overall. It's been a, a season of streaks, a five-game losing streak, a seven-game winning streak, a five-game losing streak. That's what you're dealing with currently, but it's a team that, that goes out and competes every night. But in, in looking about what you've done here in your first season of presentation, the last two seasons combined, just seven wins. So eight wins already. I think there's there's something positive. How do you attribute the turnaround? What, what, are, you, what are you doing this season? Well, early on, you know, I, I, I accepted the position a little bit late in the summer. And so we had about five and a half, six weeks to recruit. And uh, there was some turnover uh, even later then when I got the job in the staff, some things had come up with some of the staff that was already in place, and, and that happened even later. So it was really difficult to recruit, but spent an enormous amount of time recruiting that that six weeks we had, and we were able to sign, obviously, a great player in Denzel McDuffie and sign Travez Nix, Jeremiah Gilliard, Justin Steed, and, and ended up bringing in about eight or nine guys. And uh, it, was, it was a challenge. Uh, we had a lot of 
guys that we thought we could we could get that would help. But by then, they were JUCO players that maybe didn't get the um, the interest uh, that they that they wanted, and so they ended up going back to their junior colleges to play their COVID year and stay. And um, you know, they just said, "Boy, coach, you know, if you had called me." you know, a month ago or something, I would have been very interested. And I said, well, I didn't have the job a month ago, but, um, you know, we did the best we could. And I love our guys. I love our new guys. I love our returners. Our returners, you know, are buying in to, to what we're asking them to do. And so are the new guys. I think one of the biggest challenges for us this year has been the, the teams that we've been playing, a lot of them have an enormous number of returners because of the COVID year being given back. And so they know each other fairly well. Uh, they know their strengths and weaknesses, and they've had plenty of time to build chemistry in years past. And so they come into these to, to this season really with a jump start. And, and we're behind the eight ball because, you know, new staff and a, and a tremendous number of, of new players. And so we're trying to figure out how to build chemistry uh, at a very rapid pace. And so we're doing the best we can. Uh, we still haven't played our best basketball yet, but I think that as we continue to grow and continue to work, I think that's still ahead of us. Well, that's promising. That That's definitely promising. I want to ask you about that too in just a moment. Uh, with, with all that you've mentioned about recruiting too, Coach, I mean, yeah, there's there's something about hope because it's always in the future. But boy, it sure sounds like you're going down the right path, and that that hope is there with a, a number of, as you mentioned, JUCO players and more, and being able to recruit. Recruiting to Aberdeen, South Dakota, it's a college town, and you have presentation there, and as well as uh, Northern State, they play some pretty good basketball down the road. Uh, the Wolves do as well. What's it, what's it like recruiting then uh, to to get people to to Aberdeen and be a part of your program? Yeah, still learning the area and still learning the town, but everybody's been really welcoming. And, and Northern is certainly um, a, a very strong name and strong brand and st strong program here in Aberdeen. Northern State have uh, led in men's basketball, have led all of D2 in, in men's basketball attendance for, I think it's been seven or eight straight years. It's very impressive to have a tremendous uh, uh, support there for their program. And they do a really great job. And, and I've gone over and spoken with their staff and, and uh, watched their practice. And, and so they've been really welcoming as well. So uh, it's a great town. It's the third largest city in the state of South Dakota. Um, it is a college town, two colleges here. Um, everything you need is right in town, but you don't get to deal, don't have to deal with the traffic, but, but you get, you get to get around and, and go wherever you need to go fairly easily. So it's a nice place to live. Um, and it's a good place to recruit. Uh, I think that the main thing is, is getting the right players to buy into a vision of, of winning and, and turning a program around. And not everybody necessarily is cut out for that. There's people out there who want to go to something that's already established and, and they find that to be a, an easier transition for me. I'm looking for people that are tough and that understand that it's going to take some serious work and determination to turn something around. And uh, like I said, not everybody's cut out for that. So uh, we're looking for the players that uh, are willing and able to take on a challenge like that. Well, it sounds like you have accepted that challenge and and definitely right now again, eight and ten, but you have the 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 season ahead of you. And I and I appreciate, Coach, what you're saying there. Your best basketball is still ahead of you. But you have time. Push toward the postseason really is is starting now. Nine games remaining on the schedule. Have a couple of games on the road coming up later this week. You travel to Dickinson State, you travel to Valley City State, and then a four-game home swing as you turn right back around and get a back-to-back -back, uh, with Valley City State to, to start your home uh, home games and then pushing in toward, toward the postseason. So what is playing that better basketball than look like as, as you have the, the stretch run? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, and we, <laughs> we do have Dickinson and, and Valley, you know, it's there, there are two opponents over the next four games. And I think it's a, an interesting way to schedule the conference play. Um, but everybody has to deal with it. So all's fair, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, you know, I think that for us um, offensively, we're still trying to learn uh, each other. We're still trying to learn within 
our personnel and within our offense, um, who should be taking what shot, when and where. And, and I think that shot selection, insofar as speaking to other coaches and, and, and you know, reading and, and just learning from other people and then in the media as well, I don't know how much shot selection is really talked about in depth, but it's not an easy thing necessarily to discuss. Um, there's so many things at play with shot selection. You know, who's on the floor? What, what's the time? What's the score? Uh, you know, what do we need here? Did, did someone just hit three or four in a row? Did someone just miss two or three in a row? And, and I can go on down the line of all the different ways that you can kind of measure what a good and a great shot are. But we're trying to convey that to our team to the best of our ability and instill giving them the freedom to play um, and giving them some structure and spacing and, and freedom to make plays and still have creativity within the offense. Um, and so with that freedom comes responsibility and we allow them to make decisions. And right now our decision-making is getting better, uh, but it's, but it's still not where it needs to be. And so uh, we're, we're continuing to try to challenge our, our players to, to understand shot selection. And then on the defensive end, uh, we just have to be a little bit more consistent. Um, you know, I think uh, allowing 68 points and, and, 62 points on the road uh they're not bad numbers uh we, we we need a better offensive production and i think we can continue to get better on the defensive end um just with with consistency and so if we're more consistent throughout 40 minutes i think we can hold teams to even less than that um, but it's all going to come down to that all right coach well we're going to be following you here on midwest sports net so we look forward to, to seeing that uh the team and the chemistry develop and all uh, the, the things you talk about, the consistency develop as well. Coach Stan Holt, by the way, it's a privilege to get to visit with you today. I know we've had a chance to visit a number of times over the years, but now your first time and your stop at, at presentation, uh, the program looks to be in good hands. So thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit and success to the saints this year. And we just appreciate the, the opportunity to uh, say hi. Joey, it's great to reconnect with you. I've always loved everything you've done from, you know, the, the coverage you've done uh, in, in your written work to your to your broadcast. I just think that, you know, everything that you do is, is first class and uh, you're genuine in your work and it shows. And so we appreciate having the opportunity um, to talk about our program uh, with you. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir.